Okay. Uh, what's today? It's November 5th, 2019. Mm-hmm. We're doing Human Action, chapters 25 and 26, right? Yep. Cool. So, 25 is the imaginary construction of the socialist society. Right. So, question, section one, the historical origin of the socialist idea. In what ways did old liberals originate the confusion of the perfect state? Hmm. Not quite sure. Can you repeat that? In what way did old liberals originate the confusion of the perfect state? Ah, they imagined that the state was this benevolent king that had all of the same opinions as they did. Mm, And so it was going to do all the great things that it supported. Right. Why does... um, Stop the music. Why does Mises say every socialist is a disguise is a disguised dictator? For the same reason. Yeah. Yeah, they, they're like, oh, you know I can do it better. Yeah, when Bernie goes in, he's gonna do exactly the things that I support and none of the things that I'm against is gonna be perfect. And like I think every socialist projects that view onto the benevolent leader. Mm-hmm. They're gonna be perfect make all the same decisions that I think. Right. The socialist doctrine. Why is the coming of socialism inevitable, according to Marx? Um, It's like the next evolution of society. Mm -hmm. I don't know why he thinks it's inevitable. Karl Marx did not invent the socialist doctrine. His contributions were... The doctrine of polylogism, i.e. the different logical structure of minds of different classes. Uh, And the alleged inevitability of socialism. Marx's writings were successful because most thinkers of his age believed in an evolutionary advancement in history, where successive stages are necessarily superior to previous ones. If socialism was inevitable, then it was apparently better than capitalism. Ah, okay. Mm. Yeah, because every stage is better than the last. Right, they thought it was next. evolution. and Yeah. Yeah. What is the role of Hegel in the Mar- Marxist doctrines? I don't know. I don't know that either. Seems important, though. It's not in the review. Which section is it under? Section two. I don't know. I don't even, I just skimmed it. I don't see his Mm. name appear. I don't even remember um, reading about that. Hmm. Heigl? Yeah. I've, I've heard the name. I, I have think too. We've, we've talked about him here before. Um, but I don't know the answer to that question. Mm. I'll have to pass. Okay. Um, what are the three dogmas of socialist creed? And they're kind of right here. So I'll read them. Great. The socialist creed rests upon three dogmas. Society is an omnipotent and omniscient being. Society is? Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. The coming of of socialism is inevitable. And three, history is a continuous progress from less to more perfect conditions, meaning socialism is desirable. Okay. Yep. Less to more perfect conditions. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Uh, Three, the praxeological character of socialism. What does Mises concede for the sake of argument to the socialist dictator in terms of technology 
technical knowledge, obedience of his subjects, and so forth. And there's a quick comment. Our problem, the crucial and only problem of socialism, is a purely economic problem. And as such, refers merely to means and not to ultimate ends. So I'll read, read the question. What does Mises concede for the sake of argument to the socialist dictator in terms of technical knowledge, obedience of his subjects, and so forth? Um, he, he grants that the... Um the benevolent dictator has all these things, has, has perfect obedience from its mass, from its um, subjects, and it has perfect technical knowledge about oh, right. how to operate the yeah. machines. But it still doesn't know what to produce because right. it, they're not in relation to prices. It's like things are in relation to one another. And uh, prices are so important to determine what the people want produced. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Okay, so that was chapter 25. Mm -hmm. um, so this is kind of leading into what you just talked about. Chapter 26 is the impossibility of economic calculation under socialism. Yeah. Completely destroys socialism. That's, th this is what it's all about. If I had to summarize theses, uh, the, thesis of, the, the theses of Mises... I would yeah. say it's that under socialism, there's the economic calculation problem mm -hmm. where socialists, though benevolent and intelligent, do not know what to produce when and in what quantity because they lack prices. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so the problem, section one, does Mises assume that economic calculation in a market is infallible? Does this affect the valid validity of his critique of socialism? No. It's not uh, perfect. It's, it's, it's always um, it's, it's trying to be perfect, but people make mistakes. Mm -hmm. There's a comment. The paradox of planning is that it cannot plan because of the ab absence of economic calculation. I remember this section when they were talking about Maybe a socialist, like they're imagining like the evenly, wrote, not the even, the imaginary perfect socialist. Volks for staff. Yeah. And um, so maybe initially they could have prices, but all of the prices would have just be been based on like the capitalist society they used to live in. Yes. And, but like, if you lived, if somehow your socialist society survived a hundred years, your prices would not have been updated in a hundred years. They could cheat uh, on occasion. Russia or the USSR at the time would peek at the prices in the Sears catalog to see what the prices of things should be. <laughs> but, really? Yeah. But it still was not helpful because their economy was different from the U.S., mm -hmm. so the price of a doodad is yeah. not going to be the same. Past failures to conceive the problem. How does mathematical economics lend credence to the feasibility of socialism? What is the most significant critique of mathematical economics? Well, starting with the second question, I think the most significant critique is that there's no such thing as an equilibrium. What? There's So the mathematical oh, economy right. Everything is determined by the equilibrium, not by... Every, yeah, that's you know. their point. And like, so like uh, entrepreneurs, like I think they call them the movers and shakers are the thorn in the mathematical economic economist side because there's they're always changing things they're always trying to anticipate future things and speculate so that doesn't fit well but that's how the economy moves the movers and shakers <laughs> right it's not this magical equilibrium point okay so the first part 
how how does mathematical economics lend credence to the feasibility of socialism? So I'd say if your think your assumption that there like is a such thing as an equilibrium, then maybe you could say like you could plan it out so all the curves match up. Yeah. And like, yeah, maybe. Yeah. It's tempting to think that you can just use math to solve all of the problems um, mm-hmm. of socialism or of, of an imbalance in capitalism where you're like, oh, well, this isn't fair, so we can just mess with these numbers a little bit and then we'll get perfection. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't actually work that way. Why were Soviet Russia and Nazi Germany apparently able to vi- avo- to evade the chaos of which Mises warns? Because they were spying on other cultures that had prices. Mm-hmm. They didn't actually exist in a socialist vacuum where they they weren't looking to the outside to see um, for guidance as to what things are valued mm-hmm. and and what they're valued at. Recent suggestions for socialist economic calculation. What are the six suggestions, suggested solutions for so- socialist calculations? Give a short overview. Uh-huh. I have this. I don't know if I can give a short overview. I can just read them. They were listed. Um, one, calculation in kind is to be substituted for calculation in terms of money. This method is worthless. One cannot add or subtract numbers of different kinds, heterogeneous quant- um, quantities. Two, starting from the ideas of the labor theory of value, the labor hour is recommended as the unit of calculation. This suggestion does not take into account the original material factors of production and ignores the different qualities of work accomplished in the various labor hours worked by the same and by different people. Three, the unit is to be a quantity of utility. However, acting man does not measure utility. He arranges it in scales of gradation. Which is a great point. Wait, can you say that last one again? Yeah. The unit is to be a quantity of utility. However, acting man does not measure utility. He arranges it in scales of gradation Hmm. so something is either more useful or less useful but you can't be like it's five useful uh okay yeah that's right it's ordinal versus cardinal yeah i guess it's cardinal versus ordinal or it 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 is or oh yeah uh utility man measures maybe i'm okay yeah cardinal is numbers i think right okay you're right um Blah, 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 skip, skip, skip. Um, Four, calculation is to be made possible by the establishment of an artificial quasi-market, like I just talked about. The scheme is dealt with in section five of this chapter. Five, calculation is to be made with the aid of the differential equations of mathematical catalactics. And six, calculation is to be made superfluous by resorting to the method of trial and error. No, no. And he, Mises takes each of these apart. Yeah. Okay. So the next section is trial and error. How does the example of searching for a missing wallet relate to the problem with trial and error as a solution to socialist economy? So... I didn't think this was even a great example of trial and, trial and error, but from my understanding, like if you're looking for a wallet, like you're just you're gonna look in a ton of places, and then when you finally find find it, you know that you found the wallet, 
and I guess you get your money but you make profit like you, you learn and a socialist economy there's no profit there's no economic calculation so an entrepreneur doesn't really know like if their trial was successful hmm that's a good point I hadn't considered that I thought the point that he was making was more like and I agree with you it was a bad example the um, wallet thing because I don't think of finding a wallet as a trial and error. I yeah. have a methodology to right. discovering where I left things. Yeah. But um, putting that aside for a moment, I think Mises is saying entrepreneurship is not trial and error. It is a methodology, and there is a, a method where you look at what things are profitable Mm -hmm. and then do those things not like oh i'll just do a bunch of stuff and then something will be profitable yeah why is it impossible to compare input and output by methods of arithmetic in a socialist commonwealth it's because there's no economic calculation Can you say the question one more time? Why is it impossible to compare input and output by the methods of arithmetic in a socialist commonwealth? And you say it's because... There's no economic calculation. What do you mean by that? There's no prices. So oh, right. <laughs> yeah. So they're just going to say like, oh, you, you know... So you put in this input... And, but the output, you're not getting any information because everything's planned and they tell you how much it costs. Right. They tell you how much your input is worth. Also, like, if it's not put in terms of prices, it's really confusing to know how you're doing because it's like, okay, we had 100 labor hours and of input and then we had 50,000 screws as output mm -hmm. and, like two cars i was like is that good i don't know like <laughs> right okay five the quasi market why do the new socialist theorists want to keep market institutions intact even if they are in favor of abolishing private property why are these attempts feasible so i thought this was kind of interesting i think this is kind of like the brand of socialism that we kind of see in America now is they're not even trying to make the argument that um, like you don't need prices and it's like you don't need any of that like they kind of concede the point that yeah prices are important they provide value and valuable information so um, they want to keep the illusion of prices and profit and all these different things, but it's only it's it's only feasible if it it's existed before and like they can keep up the the charade, I guess. Hmm. What do you think? I'll reread the question. Yeah, what was the question? Why do the new socialist theorists want to keep market institutions intact, even if they are in favor of abolishing private property? Why aren't these attempts feasible? Um, I think it's because they see obvious value in the things that capitalism produces, and they're like, well, we can't get rid of iPhones or Amazon, we can just make it more fair by taking money from some of them and then giving it to others or determining that prices should be no more than this or that or, you know, we're just going to tweak it a little bit. And that interference destroys the market. It makes it not a market. They call it, He calls it a quasi-market and says, like, why is this not tenable? And... I, I I think it's because, say you eliminate prices in one area, the whole thing unravels. Because it's like, take Medicare, um, for example, or, or a single-payer healthcare system where it's like, 
okay, we've got all these insurance companies and doctors and nurses and hospitals and entrepreneurs and drug companies and all they, if they all come together in this medical industry and produce prices all over the place, but then you've got one single payer that pays it all and there's no downward pressure on the prices. Okay, what's going to happen? Like, it's going to have an effect across the entire industry and it becomes a quasi market. It's not really, you know, there are prices, but they're not market prices. Right. Comment um, The capitalist system is not a managerial system, it is an entrepreneurial system. Right. Why is it you have to have a stake? Yeah. Why is it impossible to play investor and speculator? What are the risks that are associated with being a business person? It's because you don't have a stake. You can't yeah. play entrepreneur as the manager, right? Because you're not going to lose anything if you're wrong, and the entrepreneur does, which means they have to make decisions and take them more seriously. Six. The differential equation of mathematical econ economics. What do the equations of mathematical economics describe? I believe the main thing is this equilibrium point. Yeah, the evenly rotating economy and like how um, if all the factors of production are employed to their like optimum level and all of the demand is like satisfied at its optimum level like that mm -hmm. sort of thing yeah I, I believe so i'm gonna read this section some socialist theorists have sh suggested that the central planner rely on the tools of mathematical economics to guide his valuation of the means of production but this too is vain a vain proposal the differential equations of mathematical econ economics Describe a long-run stationary equilibrium state. So that's, the equations do not shed light on how the planner should take the present world as it is, complete with mis misallocated capital goods and workers trained in superfluous fields according to the planner's value scale, and move forward toward the desired end state, all the while maintaining as satisfactory a condition as possible during the transition phase. So I think to sum that up, it's really, they, they don't even take into account future conditions and how to get there in this planned economy. Like hmm. no one's really thinking about the future. They're just thinking about planning like right now. Yeah, and that is really weird. They like assume that the world's not going to change and nothing's, it, it's crazy <laughs> to believe in any of this stuff, but there's a lot of people that do. Yes. Um, I lost my place. Well, we're on the last part of the last chapter. Okay. Why can't these equations provide the necessary information about future conditions? Can these equations be used to determine actions for someone under today's condition? So these equations have nothing to do with uh, speculation and anticipation for the future. It's all about like what's the demand now, what's the supply, and like how do these curves match up? It's mm -hmm. not. It's not like time. Like remember, time was a huge part of this book. And like, they time isn't an act like isn't in these equations for them. But couldn't you see in these equations whether or not something is uh, undervalued and take that as an opportunity or some sort of signal? Or right. do these equations presuppose that whatever the current equilibrium point is is uh, yeah? Ideal? But you're you're. It's undervalued at this point in time. It, so, like, if you could instantaneously, like... But that doesn't mean that maybe as time goes on, the value will come down to, like, what it is. I don't know. 
I think time is a huge thing. They just like, completely ignored time in these equations. Hmm. More recent mathematical models in neoclassical economics do not simply describe the long-run equilibrium state. They also can characterize the equilibrium transition path to such a steady state. Does this devel development vitiate Mises' critique of the mass mathematical approach? <laughs> I'll just I'll let you read that yourself because it's a long question. It was the last question on that page. The one you just read? Yeah. I felt like I was reading a paragraph. More recent mathematical models in neoclassical economics do not simply describe the long-run equilibrium state. They can also... Vitiate. I don't know what that word means. Yeah. <clears throat> Does this development vitiate Mises' critique of the mathematical approach? I would say vitiate, given the context clues. Pardon the interruption by the coffee machine. Is... It probably means... Uh, does it destroy? Or does it counteract? Does it um, suggest the opposite? Of Mises' critique. Can you get the question again? Yeah. Do they... Here it is. <clears throat> it was a serious mistake to believe that the state of equilibrium could be computed by means of mathematical operations on the basis of knowledge of conditions in a non-equilibrium state. It was no less erroneous to believe that such a knowledge of the conditions under a hypothetical state of equilibrium could be of any use for acting man in his search for the best possible solutions of the problems with which he is faced in his daily choices and activities. There is therefore no need to stress the point that the fabulous number of equations which one would have to solve each day anew for a practical utilization of the method would make the whole idea absurd, even if it were really a reasonable substitute for the market's economic calculation. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. So, even if these equilibrium state calculations were useful in determining man's actions, the sheer number of calculations one would need to compute to make intelligent decisions is absurd and it's no substitute for the market's economic calculation of just using prices right and having different actors there's so much that a price tells you um about like, oh, this loaf of bread, why is it not $100? Like, it's, it's able to be produced and delivered and um, produce a profit for the person who's selling it to you. Mm. And everyone along the way, even to the f farmer, for $2. And like, that's a lot of information. Yeah. It's insane that these points have to be argued in the first place that, I don't know, that people buy into this socialism thing i just i'd like to watch someone's journey into studying socialism and like what they're thinking at each step because i don't understand it hmm. i just can't wrap my head around it like i wish there was a group of two people reading like the socialist manifesto or <laughs> something every week and recording a chapter. Yeah. It'd they be probably very, are. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah, uh, I hope they're out there. Well, Mises wrote a book called socialism. Yeah. And when I asked, um, 
one of the directors of the Ludwig von Mises Institute. Yeah. Where should I begin on my Mises journey? He said socialism. Oh, really? So that's the first book you should read. And uh, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I, I chose human action. Yeah, I'm pretty sure like human action is like the last book you're supposed to read because it's so hard. Maybe. I think socialism is about as big. Yeah. Hmm. But uh, anyway, so this was good. Next is uh, part six. Chapter 27, The Government and the Market. Mm.